WHO's latest report is urging action by governments, the food industry and the public to remove trans fats from our food chain. What kind of foods contain trans fat? What does trans fat do to our body and how can we eliminate them? Hello and welcome to Science in 5. I'm Vismita Gupta-Smith. We are talking to Dr. Francesco Branca today. Welcome, Francesco. Francesco, let's start with what kind of foods contain trans fats? There are two uh, kinds of trans fat, the natural trans fat and the industrial trans fat. The natural trans fat uh, are contained in dairy products or in the meat of uh, uh, ruminant animals such as cows. Both trans fat are bad for our health. Uh, the industrial trans fat are the largest proportion. Uh, the value of uh, this product for the manufacturers is the fact that they have a longer shelf life and they're also cheaper. Partially hydrogenated oils are used in uh, uh, products such as uh, margarine, uh, vanaspati ghee, and they're used in uh, baked products such as donuts uh, or fried food or baked food that you often find in street food. Francesco, describe to us what trans fats do to our body when we consume them. So when trans fat enter our body, they are taken up by certain compounds that transport fat uh, in the blood flow. And uh, the more the trans fat, the higher the uh, amount of bad cholesterol that is produced and the lower the amount of the good cholesterol. So you have more of this uh, bad cholesterol which then means a higher um, amount of uh, hardening of the cell walls and inflammation of the cell walls. And this leads to a higher risk of clogging of the arteries and therefore a higher risk of heart disease and stroke. Consumption of trans fat at the current level is estimated to increase the, by 21%, by one, in five, uh, the risk of getting heart disease, and by um, even more, one in four times, the risk of dying um, for heart disease. And so we calculate that uh, with the current level of consumption of trans fat, uh, something in between three and 500,000 people every year die as a result of the consumption of this toxic compound. And if we remove this compound from the food system, we will be able to save millions of lives. Francesco, how can we remove trans fats from our food chain and has any country done it? So let me start by saying that uh, uh, trans fat are bad for your health. So removing them will uh, give you health benefits. And uh, you would not even uh, realize uh, that uh, trans fat has been removed because there's no change in taste, no change in the cost of food. It's possible to uh, remove trans fat and replace with other ingredients, vegetable uh, oils such as uh, canola oils or other uh, uh, vegetable oils, and uh, manufacturers know how to do that. It's important that countries nudge manufacturers through adequate uh, regulations uh, WHO has identified the most effective regulations which uh, imply uh, limiting the amount of trans fat below a certain very minimum level that comes usually from only natural sources or banning the sales and production of uh, industrial trans fat. Now we have 43 countries who have passed legislation in uh, the last years and this number has grown uh, very quickly in the last few years as a result of public health campaigns. Largely these countries are from the global north, high-income countries, but uh, since last year we've had countries such as India and Bangladesh who have passed regulations in line with the WHO good practices and we have good expectation that other countries such as Nigeria uh, uh, this year will also pass legislation. At the moment uh, we have um, 3 billion people in the world who are uh, covered 
by uh, the risk of exposure to trans fat because they are countries, they live in countries that where uh, legislation is uh, uh, strong. Uh, but we need to cover the rest of the world. And we really count on the collaboration uh, of all actors, government actors, uh, but also uh, manufacturers of food, oil manufacturers, to all work towards what could be an impressive public health achievement. And in fact, the elimination of the first risk factor for uh, non-communicable diseases such as heart disease. Thank you, Francesco. That was Science in 5 today. Until next time then, stay safe, stay healthy and stick with science.